Hey everybody, this is Robert Burke, and today I want to talk about a debate that has come up again uh, in the Kickstarter community, specifically the board game Kickstarter community. Uh, there's a project that has just launched on Kickstarter by Eagle Games uh, called Through the Ages. You might have heard of this game. It's a pretty popular game, and it's, it's a fantastic game too. Uh, by Vlada Shavatl, a uh, very well-known designer. Uh, the game is ranked number two on Board Game Geek. So out of all the thousands and thousands of games that people are playing in the world, this game is currently ranked number two in the world. So it's a pretty big title. And Eagle Games is a bigger publisher. I don't know if I would say they're a big publisher, uh, I think it's only a couple guys or a few guys that run the company, so I don't think anybody has any insight into how much money that company actually makes. Um, but this debate has come up since this project has launched in kicks on Kickstarter, the big debate over whether Kickstarter is okay for big guys to use. Uh, some people think that the spirit of Kickstarter is for small, uh, independent, or uh, or small companies to use to kickstart a, a creative project. Now we know that many bigger game companies have used Kickstarter to publish games. Uh, Steve Jackson Games is one. I've seen games on there uh, by GMT, by Yellow. Uh, so there's definitely some larger companies that have used Kickstarter uh, to launch projects. Uh, a company like Cool Mini or Not uses Kickstarter, I think, exclusively for their games, and they make literally millions of dollars through Kickstarter. So, my opinions on this have kind of evolved back and forth. You know, as a small independent board game designer and publisher, uh, my first reaction to when I see a game like that is, oh man, that's, you know, that's horrible. That's going to hurt me, right? Because now I've got to compete with people that have money, marketing muscle, you know, they've got a huge followings, now I've got to compete with them. But when I really think about that, is that a bad thing? I don't think it is, because, and I'll tell you why, it's because it pushes me, right? As a small guy, if I have to compete as an independent publisher with larger publishers for eyeballs and for interest and for sales, then that's a good thing because it's going to force me to do the best job I can on my games. Uh, and that's the attitude I have to take as a small board game publisher. I've got to do a better job. I'm not just competing about uh, with, you know, the 17-year-old kid that, you know, cut up some paper in his mom's basement to create a prototype and has a horrible video on Kickstarter. That's not my competition. My competition is now uh, games like, you know, companies like Eagle Games, right, and Steve Jackson Games, and Yellow, and, and Cool Mini or Not, some big companies that put out some excellent quality games, both in the, the manufactured quality and the gameplay quality. So I've got to compete with them. So that's going to force me to do the best job I can. And so I think it's good, that old adage that competition is good. So if you're a consumer of board games, I don't see why you would be against it. Because as a purely a consumer, it can only help you to have big companies on Kickstarter. For a bunch of reasons. I think having a big company on Kickstarter is going to bring more people to Kickstarter that will discover Kickstarter. right? So that's good. So that means there will be more players and hopefully a bigger pool of people that you can play with as a consumer. I think it's also uh, going to help you on the price. Now, that's not necessarily true, but one of the benefits for these larger companies of going to Kickstarter is they can cut out the middlemen, and I'll talk about that in a bit. But if they're going direct to you through Kickstarter as a consumer, hopefully you'll be able to get that game cheaper than if you bought it retail. So as a consumer, that is going to be a benefit to you as well. The third benefit is, as these bigger companies that do quality products are on Kickstarter, 
like I said earlier, it's going to force little guys like me to make sure their stuff is up to snuff, right? Because if we're not, we're not going to last. We're not going to survive on Kickstarter. So I think it's going to raise the bar for the games that you see on Kickstarter. And hopefully you will see the products coming out of Kickstarter increase in, in uh, how good those games are. Their quality will increase over time because if you can't compete you're going to be out of the ecosystem altogether so from a consumer's perspective i can't see any reason why a consumer would not want uh kickstarter to allow bigger companies to use their service so as a board game designer uh this is tough right at first like i said my first reaction was this is gonna hurt me i've got to compete with the big guys but also I wanted to go back to removing the middlemen. And you know, a lot of people that I've seen that are against bigger companies using Kickstarter, and a lot of the people that are just against Kickstarter in general, uh, as far as board games go, are uh, retail stores, right? Uh, uh, friendly local game stores and, uh, and distributors, right? They don't really like Kickstarter that much because with Kickstarter, it enables a company or designer to go directly to their customers. So it eliminates uh, those middlemen, uh, the, the storefront and, uh, and the distribution. So we're not to a point yet where that is completely eliminated and you would not be smart as an independent designer to ignore distribution and your friendly like local game store. They are still very important in the equation. And I think both of those, distributors and small game stores, should be buying games that are selling, right? If you're a, a friendly local game store and you're making decisions like, oh, that was a Kickstarter game, I don't want that. Or, oh, uh, that big company, they used Kickstarter, so I'm not buying their games anymore. You're going to go out of business quick, right? Because you want to make sure you're stocking games that your customers are looking for regardless of where they came from you know it's if it's a game that's hot and that's selling you want to have it in stock so you can make those sales same thing i think for distributors they want to make sure that they're buying the right amount of games to sell through uh, their distribution networks so they want to get that exactly right they don't want to buy too many right and they don't want to buy too little they want to maximize uh, their profit by buying the right amount of games depending on the demand for those games. Um, but these two are traditionally uh, some of the most vocal against big companies using Kickstarter or against Kickstarter in general because they are afraid that as you know that the need for them is going to disappear and that manufacturers will go to Kickstarter, they'll produce their games, they'll ship them directly to customers and if customers want it after that they can just order it from their website. So, you know, they're afraid that people won't need local game stores and won't need the, those distribution networks uh, going forward. So I think a lot of the backlash against Through the Ages being on Kickstarter, and this has come up before, right? When Steve Jackson launched Ogre on Kickstarter, this was a big debate that went on. Every time a big company releases a game on Kickstarter, this is going to be a huge debate and it's going to go all over the internet and in the forums and people are going to be debating both sides of this. All right, so so one thing I've really thought, as you can tell, I've, I've thought about this a lot and I understand the feelings on both sides. But we see these kinds of things happen when innovations come about and this happens all throughout history, right? Innovations come about, and when innovations happen, older models, older business models die, and newer business models emerge, right? Um, you know, there was a time when uh, maybe you were manufacturing buggy whips, you know, if we take that cliche example. Uh, you should have seen it coming, that automobiles were going to replace the horse and buggy, and that your business was probably going to decline. You know, when MP3s came on the scene and Napster came on the scene and streaming music came on the scene, you should have seen that CD sales were going to decline. So if you were in the business of just selling compact discs in a retail location, 
you needed to adapt or expand your business or offer value in some other way in order to survive. As much as that pains us because we want to hold on to those memories of how things were, another example is like Blockbuster Video. I remember going into the first Blockbuster Video that came to my hometown and how awesome it was to be able to select VHS tapes and take them home and watch a movie. Blockbuster Video has died. That model technology has overtaken that model. All right, so we're seeing this happen with Kickstarter. So, you know, if you are a friendly local game store, you need to adapt. You need to adapt. And don't look at this. Don't. And what, what bothers me is when I hear somebody complaining and just pointing the finger and saying, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. It's not their fault. You know, you need to look at this as an opportunity. When there's change, there is amazing amounts of opportunity. If you're just going to fight for the old way and the status quo, you could end up losing. And that means your business is going to go away. Um, and I can see that coming down the pipe. So, you know, I've been thinking about this and the same for distributors. How can they offer value? You know, for retail stores, one thing that I haven't seen in my area at all that we are starting to see around this country and I think already exists to a great extent in Europe now are these board game cafes. Right, where selling games isn't the main focus of, of your income. You are, you know, giving creating a great environment for gamers that want to come there. You have comfortable chairs, you have good lighting, maybe you have themed rooms, maybe you have a room that looks uh, like a fantasy tavern, you know, where you could see dwarves sitting in there. Maybe you have the bridge of a, of a starship where people could play, you know, space themed games. Uh, maybe you have a post-apocalyptic room where people could play zombie games and post-apocalyptic games and dystopian games. Uh, maybe you can increase the kinds of offerings that you offer your customers. Are you serving food? Do you just have potato chips and soda available? Or can you up that? Can you serve them food, make them comfortable? Uh, can you charge rent to people? Can you hold events uh, can you rent out space for events? How can you bring uh, that board game culture together and make your store a place where people want to go? Make it a place where you bring in geek culture, not just people that are looking to buy a game or maybe play magic on Friday nights. How are you going to make it a place where I want to go? Make it a place where the community wants to go. Uh, not not just like I've seen so many times when you walk into a game store. It physically makes me ill a little bit sometimes when I walk into a game store and there's just somebody behind the counter who doesn't even acknowledge you and, you know, it's just fluorescent lights and they might have a few tables and folding chairs for people to play games and it's just shelves of games, right? You've got to add value to your store and you need to do that pretty quickly because I think changes are coming. Uh, you've already seen them happening in this industry with Kickstarter and I think it's only going to increase. We haven't even started to see uh, 3D printing and how that's going to change the world so I'm not even going to go there. Uh, distribution. I see lots of opportunities in di distribution especially tied to Kickstarter. I've Kickstarted a bunch of projects myself and I can tell you fulfillment is a big horrible deal. We don't like it. So as a distributor, how can you get involved with that? You're already doing it, right? You're already fulfilling large amounts of games all over the world, all over the country. Uh, how can you help? Uh, if I had a one-stop shop that I could go to and say, hey, uh, I can if somebody said I can fulfill all your games in Australia, in Canada, in Europe, in South America, in America, here's the prices uh, that we would charge to do that. We'll take your Kickstarter, you know, we'll take your spreadsheet of all your backers and we'll do all the fulfillment for you. You know, that kind of stuff is huge, especially if they can save my backers, uh, you know, paying VAT taxes in Europe, for example, because they're shipping from within the European Union. There's lots of opportunities out there that Kickstarter is creating and I haven't seen many people taking advantage of it yet. I'm really hoping that there's going to be some innovators in, in, in the distribution space and some innovators in the retail space in board gaming.
There's a lot of talk about innovation in board game design and board game companies. There's a lot of talk about innovation in Kickstarter and how that's changing the game. But what I'm hearing from distributors and retail stores is how horrible it is, you know, and that how dare Kickstarter, you know, do this to us. I guess my point is I'm hoping you'll turn that, you'll you'll see the writing on the wall and you'll see that as an opportunity to innovate and help move the industry forward and make it better instead of shriveling up and dying. Um, because I think that's what a lot of, is gonna happen to a lot of retailers. I saw it happen to a lot of people in the music industry. Anyway, I hope I didn't rant too much. Uh, I'm just hoping that I see some of that innovation. I want the hobby to grow. I want everybody to do well. I don't like it when I see people fighting. I think we need to work together. My name is Robert Burke. Thanks for watching.